wonderful. Um, cool.
wasn't yeah. singing too loud, but yeah. you want to um, do a real try? Use a little more piano, but I can still hear here, but maybe a little more piano. Yeah, Maybe they have this too. Oh,
Test one, two, one, two. Testing, one, two. All right, thank you guys for being here. It's a huge crowd, you know, but small but mighty, I like to say. Um, but we're, we're gonna just uh, rehearse a little bit and kind of invite you guys to just kind of see how we put something together. So this is a, a composition entitled Nostrand Avenue. We've been somewhat working on it, but we haven't rehearsed it in a while. Um, so we're gonna just kind of have an open rehearsal to start with. And then uh, I'll get to know you guys a little bit and we'll take some questions and then uh, maybe have you join in at some point, all right? Um, but let me just let you know who you're listening to on piano, that's Laszlo Gardoni. Any, any, any piano players? Okay. On bass, that's Avery Sharp. Any bass players? Okay. On saxophone, that's Ian Buss. Any saxophonist? And on vocal, Leah Hinton. Any vocalists? I'm striking out here. <laughs> I think I'm beyond three, too. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's Rick Peckham on guitar. Any guitarists? Okay. And yours truly, my name is Yaron Israel playing drums. Any drummers? Okay, all right, we got one. So uh, what do you guys, you guys play an instrument? Okay, okay. So, so you, you, but you might have some questions about how this world of jazz operates. So hoping that, that yeah, yeah, good. So we're gonna start, uh, as I mentioned, this is a song um, in tribute to Max Roach and Sonny Rollins, who had a, um, an amazing collaboration that resulted in the recording sa um, saxophone Colossus. So this is an original of mine entitled Nostrand Avenue. And we may, we may stop.
play the background on like you know when you feel that you know that riff or the, the solo climax or whatever, and we'll go through it like eight measures. After that, then let's just break it down to drums and saxophone. Okay, so when you just cued us, that was not the drum interval. Uh, no, because we were still in the solo. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where 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 I cued you, I wanted us to drop out and just saxophone. But I think it would probably be best if we start. I'm sorry, when you just cued, we were we were supposed to drop out. Let's do that again. Let's do, uh, let's start on the guitar solo. One, two. Thank you. 
So that's an example of how we might put something together, um, something that's unfamiliar or something that uh, we may have not performed in a while or rehearsed in a while. Um, and then we'll put it all together. Maybe tonight you'll hear it all together and you'll have the inside scoop <laughs> of what's supposed to happen. Oh, the piano's supposed to play on the interlude. Okay, they did it. They did it right. So. That's the idea. Um, we're going to play something else. Uh, we're going to invite Leah up and play something with uh, vocals. And uh, this is a, another song. Um, we haven't actually played this song together, not once yet. Uh, some of us have played it, and some of us have not. So I figured this would be another good one to kind of give you an inside scoop of an open rehearsal. Uh, this is a song by the great Yvonne Lenz. Everybody, anybody heard of him? Yvonne Lenz, great. Bra <laughs> He's a fantastic uh, Brazilian composer, pianist, vocalist, and he wrote some beautiful, beautiful music, including this particular song, which is entitled The Island.
desert I am. Bathe me in the waters, warm me in the moonlight. Taste me with your kisses, find no secret places. Touch me till I tremble.
I think Leah has uh, been holding out on us. <laughs> she, this was supposed to be her first time singing it, but <laughs> I don't know about all that. It's been, it's been on repeat at home, so it's a good one. <laughs> that was nice. Um, so we'd like to swing one for you, and then after that, we're going to take some questions. Uh, I would imagine we might have a lot of questions. I hope you do. Um, the more traditional feel. Um, this is a song that we sometimes play as well. Um, actually, let's do one that we're going to do tonight. Um, let's do No Greater Love. This is a jazz standard, um, and we have a, a special little arrangement on it. We'll open up the solos a little different. Uh, so Leah, you should take a solo. Uh, Ian should take a solo take some solos. Oh, no, you should take the last solo. Okay, and then that way you can go into the bridge. No greater song, no heart so true. There is no greater thrill than what you bring to me. No sweeter song than what you sing to me. You're the sweet.
wasn't gonna take a solo. He thought he was getting out of it. No, love a little day. Oh, baby, I don't day. Oh, but light, 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 light. Leave a bit of the above. Oh, baby, oh, yeah. Oh, Yeah, yeah. 
So we're going to tighten up our little routine here. So, uh, so Leah has the last solo. That'll be the way we'll do it. Um, when, when we hit the bridge, we'll go into a double time feel with the, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the uh, pedal. Uh. And then after we do that, and then that's actually the sign. That's measure 25. We have to hit um, ba, ba, ba. And then we go to 33, which is the last A with the tag. Da, da, which is the same hits as the first A. And then we jump to the coda from there. And then we just swing like we just did. Mm. <laughs> so that's a, that's a C pedal. And then, and yeah, on Q, we, we, we're, we, we play measure 77. Seventy-six. Yeah. 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 Seventy-six. So yeah. Yeah. We're gonna do it that way. We had talked about doing it. She. She. But she, not coming back on the bridge. Yes. Keeping the form. Y keeping the form. So yeah, Leah, you'll at least take. Song. If you take one chorus, you'll have to take one chorus and two A's. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Actually, yeah. We won't. We won't jump to the co to the bridge. We'll the bridge at, in the in, in her so to the soul. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you could either take two A's or you take A A B A, and then uh, A A. Okay, A A from where though? On her solo. Yeah. So it's it would be A A B A A, and then back to. Oh, A solo, yeah, not for the uh, Right, yeah. right. Then A, A solo. Then we jump to the sign. Because she's singing at the end. Maybe A is good, and then go to the bridge after that because she started the lyrics. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's not, and that's, then yeah. The extended one at the end. And the, yeah, yeah. 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 But if she starts to learn, so I'm playing just the solo changes. I'm not playing that, those other hits. Solo change, right, right, right. You're playing the solo changes, right. uh, which I think is on the third page. Not looking at the chart, but the soul change is on the second and third page. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So we just stay with those changes, but after the second A, actually the DSO is the second ending. So when Leo takes her solo, she'll just play from 41 and go to the second ending and take the DS back to 25, mm -hmm. just like the chart. Okay. Oh. So am I? I am doing the same. No, I'm just AA. Okay. Just AA. Okay. Just AA. And then we DS. take the sign. Okay. Yep, okay. and then sign to the coda. All right, so you guys get that? You guys get all that uh, <laughs> musician's talk? <laughs> well, you, again, we're going to actually perform this one uh, this evening, so you could, you could see if, we, uh, if, the, if your translation served you well. <laughs> uh, so we just want to take some questions, see what you're thinking about. You heard three distinct kind of different songs. One, the first song, again, Nostrand Avenue, uh, was kind of our tribute to the music of the Caribbean. Then you heard something in a Brazilian style, um, kind of a, a samba. And then you heard something in a swing style. So, any questions? I'll have to, I'll just say your question oh, on the mic. How much of an arrangement is written down? Uh, and is it a standard thing where the guy don't know whatever to do the solo? And any jazz song is only this thing, and then it moves on to the band or the next solo? Mm -hmm. Is there a standard thing in jazz? Yes. yes. Yeah, so that's a great question. His question was, is there a standard uh, format or standard um, number of bars that you solo on in a given jazz song? And I think we can answer that in a kind of general way. Um, each song has its own form. That form may be 12 measures. That form may be 16 measures. It may be 32, but it's a cycle of those are many, those many measures. And in those measures, there's harmonic movement. You know, there's chords that are happening. And um, also in that movement there, the phrases are broken down. It could be an eight measure phrase. And then this form is 
the same form usually that the melody is played on. So for, I always say for, for someone who is new to jazz or trying to figure out what the jazz musicians are doing, a good exercise would be see if you can hum the melody while the, while the musicians are improvising because it's the same structure, harmonically usually, and also uh, certainly rhythmically, but also the same length of measures. Yeah, yeah. When they, then they repeat it. It keeps repeating. The same, let's say we're doing a 16 measure song, okay? Then those 16 measures just keep recycling. Keep, they keep repeating and the, the soloist could play. Yeah, but they can also, let's say you wanna take more than one time through the song. Then you take those 16 measures once, twice, three times, four times. Uh, sometimes, not always, you know. Sometimes we're listening to each other so we can kinda tell when they might be finished. Yeah, a lot of that. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else well, so wants to ask it. Well, sometimes it's instinct and sometimes it's... I always tell um, my students and people that no matter what kind of music you play, 95% of music is listening and hearing. It's like if you go to a classical concert, those are just notes on the paper. They've got to make them come alive. So it's the same, but with jazz, there's much more to that in that we're constantly listening to each other because we're constantly feeding off each other. We're constantly improvising over that structure that, that Euron talked about. Yeah. So sometimes a sax player might play something that, oh, I'd be like, oh, that's slick. And I might play something to respond to it or the piano player. So that there's, there's always a conversation that's going on. And that's, that's really the main thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to communicate. It's like. It's like you learning a dictionary or a person learning a dictionary and just repeating those, those words. They don't make any sense until you put them into a sentence. Yeah, so we have, we, yeah, we have the structure of the tune, but we have a, not, we have a very big vocabulary <coughs> from playing together, you know, from playing many years of, of practicing. So, and then there's, an, then there's another type of jazz where it's just totally improvised where there's no structure, it's just, it just comes from, like, we've all been playing enough that we could just make something up totally out, yeah. what some people might call free jazz or avant-garde jazz. Yeah. But there would be a conversation that's happening about 10 minutes into it, we might lose y'all, but, <laughs> but we, you know, it's, it's, it's like a bunch of doctors getting together and, and talking, right. you know, the regular, the, the, the lay person be going like, what the heck are they talking about? You know, after, they know what they're talking about. So that, that's, that's another approach to jazz as well. So how much of an, a part of an arrangement is written down? That's your question? Yeah. I'm gonna have to hand the mic over so you can hear some, from some other voices here. Rick, you wanna okay. chime in on that? Sure. Well, this is a, a standard tune I don't, it, it says uh, Isham Jones is who wrote it. Uh, there is no greater love. It's a 32 bar tune that, uh, um, I mean, listening um, to Iran and Avery uh, talk, it makes me think of uh, a great teacher at, Ray, uh, at Berkeley who passed away a while ago, Ray Santisi. And he talked about form is the invisible language of musicians. So these sort of multiples of four that Yaron is talking about is uh, those are sort of the those are sort of like little crossroads places where the band will know to take a left or a right. But uh, as far as how much is written down, this one if we're going to do there is no greater love. Uh, usually, it's in a different key than this, and if there's going to be an arranged introduction and some people are going to drop out and some people are going to be in, that's where the arranger comes in as far as. Uh, making it so that it's not just a continual, um, just a, a speech where everybody's talking at once. It's that we're, we're mixing up how many of us are playing. There's so many different possibilities of duos in the band and trios in the band. So that's what the arranger kind of helps uh, get together. Oh. Yeah. Um, actually, oh, go ahead. So 
sometimes when you uh, take it out during, during the solo uh, and uh, you want the band to know that you're coming back in, then you bring them up. <laughs> that's a, that's a good way of communicating, but that's all a part of communicating because when you do that, then all of a sudden we're hearing that and we yeah. know precisely where we are. Yeah. That's uh, that's definitely a a, a, tra a a good trade of the uh, trick of the trade to do that. Yes, and it, and it doesn't make any difference what instrument it's on. Um, sometimes. Um, you know, on, on rhythm-based instruments, whether it be drums, congas, drum set, whatever. Sometimes, um, you know, you people might say, well, can you play the melody on those instruments? And the answer is yes, you can play, uh, you know, it may not be, it won't sound like a piano, you know, each pitch is not so definitive, but there is enough there where we could communicate with the people who we're playing with and they would know exactly where we are. If we played the melody so um, any uh, so we're gonna play you can think of some more questions I don't want to uh, uh, want you guys to run out of questions so we're gonna play a little bit <laughs> and then we're gonna um, if you have any other questions so Avery mentioned something free jazz and we won't go we won't play it over 10 minutes <laughs> <laughs> But I like, I like to, you know, give you the opposite spectrum. So we talked about many songs are based on a certain form. You know, the song that you just heard, There Is No Greater Love, is based on a 32 measure form. But sometimes we, we create music and it doesn't have a definitive form. We create the form, we create the melodies, we create the interaction, we create the groove, you know, spontaneously. So we're going to try, we're going to actually adventure into that, that mode of, of uh, improvising or creating a piece. A lot of times, the great people like Dexter Gordon, so many people use quotes and different songs. Uh, Horace Silver is great at that too. A lot of times those folks are based on maybe folk songs, based on you know, uh, you know, other types of music that, is, that may not be associated with jazz. Like Sean Rafael. Yeah, but even in, on the solo that he takes or took on that recording, the original recording, he's quoting melodies from maybe Kate Bird melodies, maybe folk or melodies. He, he was really he had a really vast vocabulary of songs that were outside the jazz, you know, the norm, the jazz norm. So you would hear those quotes in his solo. He'd be taking a solo, but he'd be quoting melodies yeah. in various places. Yeah. All right, so we're going to see what happens. We're going to have everybody, you know, start, and we'll break down into some duos. We'll just see where the creator takes us. So we're not going to we're just going to take a moment to just create, create a, a
So, you know, there we were really tapping into, you know, the, that, this whole aspect of listening to one another and just creating and not, you know, sometimes it, you, you can be uh, overcoming sometimes even like fear of that kind of thing, you know, but just believing in what you're hearing, believing in what you're feeling and putting it out there. So that, that's a part, even, even that attitude, I think is a part of even when you play on, on a structure, whether it be 32 measures, 16 measures, whatever, having that kind of fearlessness and listening should even happen on those kind of songs. But this, this, didn't, have, this didn't have anything to do with a form like that, but this was free. What's that? <laughs> so if, if you ask us to play that again, we would not be able to do no. that. Right, right. That was spontaneous. Yeah. There was no melody. Just well, there was a melody. Yeah. But not in you know, the traditional 32 bar sense that we can play like over and above. So there was a melody, but it was different. So melodies. Like several so melodies. Melodies. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. melodies. You know, happening. And uh, so, yeah, so we, we you know, it's, we really, we wanted to highlight that aspect of like really listening and communicating to one another, with one another. You know, it's like if we had a conversation, you know, the same type of, of thing would happen. We both can't be speaking at the same time or, you know, um, but, but somebody has to listen, somebody speak, it's a give and take. Um, so that, that's a big part of what we do uh, as jazz musicians. And uh, another thing I want to mention, you know, there's a, there's a spiritual component to all of this as well, you know, um, which is very important, no matter if you're playing on a 32 measure or you're playing on a spontaneous piece, you know, tapping into, you know, that inner, whatever that is for you, that inner being and, and, and creating something from that is very important too. So, uh, I don't know, Ian, you want to chime in about that? About the improvisation? Yeah, sure. I think it's really interesting to improvise freely like that because, kind of the same way in a conversation, somebody brings up something and it sparks somebody else, it sparks you to think of something else, sparks another story to come up, sparks, you know, all kinds of different thoughts and we can all come together and converge on that. There were definitely some examples of where Avery or anybody in the band played something and I thought, oh wow, we could go there or there or this, all these other directions. And I think that's what the creativity is really about is kind of hearing it in the context of what everyone else is doing. I don't know if you, I'll say one quick thing. I don't know if you heard Ian on saxophone, he did a line and then I repeated that line so that's always my favorite, like the, the give and take, you know, conversation, call play, and call and response, trading lines. That's always my favorite, that communicative aspect of it. Uh, like the, he mentioned earlier, some duos and, and things like that. That's, that's always my favorite to, to do. When I heard June sing, I thought, well, now she's going to sing something. <laughs> and, and I heard him sounding like, sounding like, Wayne Charter. I, I love, I love, every time I hear Graham, I, it's like, it's, nobody can do it like Wayne Charter, you know what I mean? And, and you've got that, you got that sound, it just reminds me of uh, Wayne Charter. And, and so when you started singing, I was like, here comes, here comes the side. And you guys were just super like, amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. So we'd like to, uh, I think I, I asked everybody their instrument. Oh, yes. So, I was wondering if you could just describe the process of just how the melody just comes into your head and how everyone just seems to like catch on the same melody and it's just unplanned. That's a great question. Yeah, I, I think. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You got it. Just can you repeat this question so they hear it? Uh, so, the question was how the melody comes to your head, right? When you hear this certain color. I mean, what is interesting about any kind of music that we don't even talk about much even in an uh, academic setting is that everything, melody, harmony, comes from a certain color or sound. And uh, the only way you can connect on this level that you connect to the sound that the other musician plays out of. So we call major a scale because you can teach a kid to go one note at a time. <laughs> that, but there is such a thing as a major sound or 
or melodic minor sound, which is very similar to colors. Like you have a sense of it, the way you have a sense of a color. So without having that kind of hearing, it's very hard to build on each other because then you just latch on to the actual notes they played, but not the whole ocean of sound <laughs> that it's coming out of. But if you do, same with the rhythm, you know? Uh, when you hear somebody playing a rhythm, you have to sort of have the whole ocean around it, wherever that rhythm came from. What's the source of that rhythm? What other possibilities are there? So I think that's the only way you communicate. And it's all on an instinctive level, so I am, I'm not uh, saying that you have to take stock of what's going on and <laughs> analyze very consciously because you have to be in the moment. You have to really feel it in the moment. And that's the only way we feel good about it. And that's the way it happens to be something we can never repeat again. <laughs> My students sometimes ask me, you know, how, what was that? And sometimes I have to say, well, did you record it? If you didn't, we, we can't really talk <laughs> about this because it's gone. It happened two minutes ago. Well, I think that. For instance, in classical music, that's more of a composer's forum. It's about the composer, whereas jazz, it's about the individual, because we're always, when we improvise, we're composing in the moment. So the melody, you know, as I said before, it's, it's, it's like a vocabulary. We've built up a vocabulary that now we can talk with each other. So there's so many melodies in our heads from playing, you know, so much that and when we're improvising, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to compose in that moment a sentence that you will under that the audience will understand. And the the spiritual component that uh, that Euron talked about, I know for myself as a, as a musician, I was you know raised in the sanctified church, and and but I always thought you know I always I always ask my students, what's the original intent of music? And the original intent of music was man or humans, woman, trying to communicate with the gods, whatever that would be. And then, of course, trying to communicate with each other. So I always try to keep that spiritual component, be the original intent of music in general, the original intent of music. You know, Bach, you know, if you hear classical music now, people say, well, that's the way it was. No, cats were improvising back then. You, would, you know. I, I played that, that very piece with different um, pub publishing companies. Right. And when you get to the cadenza, it's different. Right. And my teacher says, forget that, write your own cadenza. <laughs> well, you know, history is not exact. So when that music was written, maybe it wasn't exact. I mean, People come and hear Duke Ellington 200 years from now, and if Duke Ellington was to come back, he'd be like, that's not the way I intended it, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's music, all music is always, or should be always evolving. Yeah. So basically what I was saying that um, things are gone, but um, basically um, some memories of what happened is there, like, um, basic sounds, like Ian played a major seven on a D flat minor chord that immediately brings a certain scale to mind, a melodic minor, right? It doesn't mean that you're gonna know exactly what you're gonna play from it. You can teach that way, you can teach exactly that I'm gonna show you these kind of things, approach notes, whatever, scale patterns, and that's fine, but usually it's fine if you analyze an actually inspired piece that was created in the moment, and you say, okay, this is what happened there, and that's the logical aspect of it. But uh, Cecil Taylor uh, said once at a, as a keynote address that logic is the lowest kind of magic. Lo lowest kind of magic. So if you wanna, uh, uh, as uh, Avery was mentioning, the spiritual aspect of it, if you're gonna reduce it just logical things, then you didn't uh, do justice to the music. 
you just have to understand that aspect of it if you teach, but when you create, you have to create uh, from that source. That's Avery mentioned. Thank you. Great. Um, any, other, any other questions? Yes. So I, I start with an answer because when I first came in, you asked me a question. All of them. So just to um, clarify, or, or just to let everybody know what uh, your question, what's your name? Lou. Lou. So Lou asked about specifically uh, in, in, in the, on a percussion instrument, what clef are we, do we play in? And um, melodically, what happens, what's going on in the mind of a percussionist, let's say, or a drummer? So, um, to answer your question about written music, so when it comes to clefs for percussion instruments, uh, particularly those that are non-tuned or that don't have a definite pitch, you know, whether it be drum set, whether it be hand percussion, whether it be those kind of instruments, most people that write, they write what we, what we call a non-clef. It's not, you know, it's not a treble clef, it's not a bass clef. It's because what's the, what they're gonna put on the, the staff is not really related to you know, the pitches as we know, the, the, the grand staff, okay? So that's one way of writing. Another way of writing, kind of an older concept, is that drum music would just be put in bass clef. I don't know where that came from, but that's just the way you know, a, lot of, a lot of older music was written, just so that it was a clef there. But now it's, it's typically written in a way where it, there, there's an indefinite clef. There's not a bass clef, not a treble clef. Um, to answer your, your second part of the question, um, you know, there's melody in everything. You know, like sometimes if, if, you're, if you live in an apartment building and there's somebody even like, you hear them stepping, you know, of course that's not a, you know, it's not a piano or anything, but there's melody in, I think, everything, you know? And so uh, there is certainly melody, and I think the training part of that is listening to a lot of music and actually learning actual melodies. Whether you sing them, if you can sing them, you generally can play them. So if I sing a Charlie Parker melody, you know, uh, now's the time, you know, or something like that, then I should be able to emulate that melody to some degree on these instrument, you know, on this percussion instrument or any other percussion instrument, because I have an idea of what the melody feels like physically, and I have an idea of, you know, and, and if I saw it written, I would have an oral uh, perspective as well. Well, I would, I would have a visual perspective, and then I've listened to it, I have an oral perspective. And it's a matter of transferring that into the instrument. And, and no matter what instrument you play, we all do that, really. But I think, you know, from uh, sometimes, because I, I get that question a lot, and, and so it's not as clear, clearly defined, because we don't have, you know, okay, that's going to be an A, that's going to be a B. We don't have that on this instrument. It's not as clearly defined, but the process 
is the same as any other instrument. You have to learn repertoire, and you have to be able to transfer that uh, through your instrument. It, and, it, and it starts with, you know, many great musicians. I, I think about somebody um, who came up a couple of days ago, Frank Morgan. If anybody know Frank Morgan? I had the privilege of touring with Frank Morgan and performing with him, and he would always say the sound is not in these pieces of wood, uh, no matter what they are, even, even on the instruments that are defined you know, pitch-wise. The, the sound is not there. The sound is here. That's why you can have, you, we can have 10 drummers come up here and play this instrument, and they all would sound different because the sound has to start in here. So the sound of pitch, the sound of melody, all that kind of thing, it, it starts here. If you can, you know, it's what you hear and what you feel ultimately, you know. And, and if, you, if, the, if it's strong enough, it will come out. That's, that's my take on it as a percussionist. Yeah. That's a great question. I had prepared, came here with some music that's written for percussion. And I wanted to share it with you because I had to perform this. And I looked at it and said, you know, I've done this many times, but as a drummer, that's normally the way percussion is written. <laughs> and I listened to, we were doing it for, with the choir at my church, you know, and because I play congas, and you know how to play congas here, here, we got the notes right here. And I'm like, I, I, I know. I listened on, on YouTube to a couple of different choirs doing the song. I know what they're trying to do in in the really in, in, in the musical way it's written, but that's not really what to do. So yeah. when I performed with the choir, I did it my way. Yeah. I knew what was happening. So basically, what was going on. Just to clarify, now there are there are percussion instruments that are pitched. You know, marimba, vibraphone, and those kinds. So, so another side of that question that you asked, and those instruments play in treble clef or play in bass clef, or, or like in the case of a marimba, has such a large range that it typically music is written in a grand staff. Um, so, and then to your point, um, sometimes when you're writing for, like, say, a group of percussionists or you have something specific, people will. I've, I worked with um, a gentleman by the name of Henry Threadgill. And Henry, we had two drummers in the band. And he also had a cellist on this band. He called it the sextet, but it was more people than six. <laughs> because each voice he considered one. So there was two drummers, that's one person. He had four horns, he had uh, bass and cello, who he, they, he thought of as one instrument. So uh, he would write specific drum parts, and he would have an idea of pitch for the drummer. So we would then have to experiment with tuning the drums a certain way, and my part would be in contrast to the other drummers. So, so there is some of that happening too, you know, as well, where there's real definite ideas of composers about what to play. And when you're faced with something like that, you know, I, I try to honor that first. But uh, sometimes it's not always because a person may not be physic doesn't physically play the instrument. It doesn't always work. But I would say if somebody actually wrote something specific for you, you should try to play it. Oh, that's precisely <laughs> what I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm not going to pay any attention to that. I'm going to do my own thing. But yeah, because, you know, it took, it, in a case like, like, say, with Henry, I mean, it, it took him a lot of time to, like, conceptualize what he wanted. You know, and sometimes it was, most of the time it worked out, but sometimes it didn't, you know, so. I remember um, before I got to Berkeley, I had uh, a piece that I wanted to use for my uh, audition, you know, and um, it was for three, three compounds, and it was written just at different levels. So I knew that it was the high one, the middle one, and the low one, and that's the way it was written. Basically, make sure you have the rhythm right. correct. Yeah, that's typical. And so, to know which, which drum to hit. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, so we're gonna, if our, our, is there another question? We're gonna end with, Henry, since you brought your instrument, we're gonna have you come up and play with us. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a short version of something. I don't know what yet, maybe a, a blue bassa. And uh, thank you guys for coming early. Uh, we, we have to stop like pretty immediate so that we have some time to rest our minds and uh, get ready for six o'clock. So, so we're gonna go ahead and start, Henry. You join in.
right back at 6 o'clock. See you then. Thank you.
Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Good, evening. Good evening. Welcome to Jazz in the Sanctuary. Can we put our hands together? Woo, Jazz in the Sanctuary South Shore Series. Okay, guys, this is my debut. I'm going to be singing tonight. So you guys excited? No, I'm just kidding. Even this light, really? <laughs> not tonight, not tonight. It's coming, though. 
one of these days. Okay, so, <laughs> so I'm before you to give you guys, I want to open this up to welcome you guys for coming to um, our program on this evening. We thank you for your support, and uh, we, just, we just thank you for being here. And we're happy. Smile, you ride Israel. <laughs> he's in that work. He's in that work zone. Look. Mm. So, <laughs> so I want to take the opportunity. I'll go over a couple of things with you. The housekeeping for those of you that came right in. Um, in the rear, to my right, and some of you's right, and some of you left. To our, uh, there are restrooms. There's a coat closet there. So, um, if you need to step out for a moment, uh, you can do that. Um, there will be one set this evening, and um, yeah, so that's the housekeeping. Oh, oh, who am I? Oh, I'm A. Gilmore Israel. I have the same last name as the band leader. I don't know how that happened, but uh, <laughs> we have the same last name, so yeah. So I want to take an opportunity to, to engage you all. We have, um, they're not here yet, but we have sponsors. Um, that have been supporting us since we started in 2018. Although we started in 2018, we have been working probably on this project and doing the two concerts a year, uh, the South Shore series, for almost 10 years. It took us, you know, it took us that long to really get it moving. So we really appreciate our supporters. We do have um, um, Cynthia Kaipu and David Kaipu, they have supported us from day one. Again, they're on their way. They're not here yet. And we want to encourage those of you that would like to, um, to support us, uh, to become um, contributors uh, to what you hear and what you see is happening in the South Shore. We are talking about putting more programs in place, maybe something throughout the summer. But of course, you need support. So we, we welcome all of your donations. And you can, in turn, there is a... Um, there is a, what do you call that, barcode? What do you call the barcode? It's called a uh, QR code. I forgot that. See, I'm, I'm kind of nervous standing here, you guys, tonight. I don't know why. But um, there's a QR code. You can scan the QR code, and um, you'll, um, you can find out the sponsorship information. And um, I believe I'm covering everything, the sponsorship. And we are so sorry that we started a little bit late. So the concert, um, we were scheduled to start around 6 o'clock, but we started a little bit late because of some um, technical situations. So we're glad you're here. We hope you enjoy the concert. And before I leave, before every concert, we pray, because that's very important. Um, we pray with the staff and part of the band. But we like, to open up, we like to open up in prayer, because we really, really believe God is opening doors for us to continue to bring this level of music in the South Shore. And we're excited about it, it spreading out the more. We're excited about expanding. And, um, and I thank all of you, in case I don't come back, I thank all of you, the volunteer staff. Can we put our hands together? A volunteer staff. And even those that are working with us, um, the team that works with us behind the scenes, we really appreciate all of you for um, being a part of Jazz in the Sanctuary South Shore Series. So we're going to pray now. So, Father, we thank you for this, this opportunity to bring this music. We thank you for the gifts and the talents of uh, Yaron Israel and his team. We thank you for each one of them. We thank you for those people that are on their way. They're traveling, and we just pray that they um, have safe journeys here. We're praying that this will be a successful evening because everything that we do, everything that we say, we know that you have been the one to enable us for it. So we trust you for a successful concert. We trust you for a successful series here in the South Shore, and we, we believe in you that we will enlarge and we will expand to spread these gifts throughout this region. So it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can we put our hands together for those of you that are okay with that? So in a moment, we're going to have the team coming up, right? So I'm going to take a moment. Oh, there's no, let me see. Let me make sure I'm doing everything right. My husband's looking at me. So we're going to have, put your hands together for Yaron Israel and High Standards. So we have Mr. Yaron Israel, who is the leader of the band. Give him a hand. And he'll probably say more to you. Uh, we have here with us tonight, we have uh, the next person in the band we have here is Avery Sharp. Are we doing the band? What? Okay. And the next person in our band, we have 
Rick Peckham, who's on guitar. And Avery is acoustic and electric bass. You guys can give them more than that. Come on, let's get some claps, come on. They're gonna give you high class music in here tonight. Let's do it. And then we have Laszlo Gardoni on the piano. Woo! He's gonna make those keys talk tonight. Yes. And then we have Ian Buss. Bat Buss, Ian, I know about Ian. Tenor and soprano saxophone. Woo! That's the band. And then we have tonight our special guest by way of New York, Leah Hinton is our guest vocalist. Woo! And again, I just want to give it up for Yaron Israel on drums and percussion and the leader of the band. Woo! And we want to hear some of that tonight. We want to get excited. Are you guys excited tonight? Come on, let's put our hands together and welcome Yaron Israel in high standards. Woo! Give it up for A. Gail Moore Israel. <laughs> um, it's really an honor to be in front of you to play this music uh, this evening. Um, and as she said, we have a, it, it's such a pleasure also for me to share the bandstand with such amazing musicians. So you are in for a treat. And uh, I also want to acknowledge, uh, we wouldn't be here, you know, this, this concert series is called Jazz in the Sanctuary. And actually we started this series in 2017. Uh, to be exact. And uh, we started it with the vision that the concerts would take place in a church. But a couple years ago, uh, don't you think this campus is beautiful? And so it, it re just reminded me, uh, it just gave me a feeling of a sanctuary uh, planted here like a gym in Easton, Massachusetts. So this has been, this is our second concert and uh, here at uh, Stonehill College. And I'd like to acknowledge and thank Professor John Bond, Bond, who, James Bond, sorry, Professor James Bond, and the music program for hosting us and also the staff at Stonehill. So I want to definitely acknowledge them because they have been wonderful. So with that being said, we're going to get to playing some music. Um, this first composition, we're actually in the process of recording a new um, well, we can't really say CD anymore, but we're in the process of recording a new work. And um, one of the songs, we're going to be playing some music from that work. Uh, try it out on you guys. You can kind of let us know how you feel about it. <laughs> Only positive things, though. So we're going to uh, start with a composition <laughs> called Arena. And um, it's, it's actually a Greek word for peace. So enjoy.
Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to keep the music going. I'll tell you a little bit about uh, some of these gentlemen up here. Um, well, I'll do that right now. Um, Lasso Gardoni and I have had a partnership for quite some time. Uh, we've been playing together since, uh, almost since I've come to Boston, and that's since about 2001, 2002. Uh, he has his own trio and groups, and uh, we recorded a num numerous recordings we've done together with his group as well as mine. Uh, and he's a leader in his own right, as I've alluded to. Please give it up for Mr. Laszlo Gardoni. And someone else who I've known for some time. <laughs> I'm not going to say a long time. But uh, I met this gentleman. We were um, touring. He was with uh, McCoy Tyner, if I remember correctly. He's worked with the likes of McCoy Tyner and so many other greats. And um, we met in Europe. Um, I was actually touring with the great Ahmed Jamal, and somehow we crossed, uh, we somehow came across each other's paths, and uh, that was way back when. We're not going to even talk about when that was, but, <laughs> but that was a while back, and Avery is also a leader in his own right, and I've done a number of his recordings, and uh, we're looking forward to the new recording that we're working on now with my band. Please give it up for Avery Sharp. Uh, also, another gentleman, we have a long history. He's also a professor at uh, Berklee College of Music where I teach as well as Laszlo Gardoni, and uh, we've traveled around the world together, and uh, it's always great when I can have him on the bandstand with me. And also, he's a leader in its own right and composer, arranger. Please give it up for Rick Peckham. And this gentleman, uh, I don't have the extensive history with, but I feel I do because he's from San Diego, California, and a very dear friend of, a mutual friend of ours, uh, who I've known for quite some time. Um, we share that friend, and that friend has probably mentioned this gentleman and had no idea he would somehow land in Boston of all places. But uh, Ian is also a fantastic educator, composer, arranger in its own right. And uh, we just played a gig with his band um, a few weeks ago. That was, uh, we had a great time um, with his quartet. So give it up for Mr. Ian Buss. Uh, as, as I mentioned, as professors at uh, Berkeley College of Music, it's always an honor when we have the chance to actually share the bandstand with a student or a former student. And uh, this young lady is such. Um, I saw her grow as a student at Berkeley, and uh, I always kept my eyes on her. Okay, where is she at now? Where is she? What is she doing now? And uh, because I, I knew that she had something special and that we would have this opportunity to work together. We've been working together now for almost close to a year or so. And it's been, um, you know, it's been, been an honor and a privilege to actually share the stage with her. So please give it up for the lovely, the talented Miss Leah Hinton. And uh, we're going to get started. Uh, any Stevie Wonder fans in here? <laughs> OK. <laughs> I figured, I, fi I hoped so. Uh, a number of years ago, we did a recording entitled Visions, the music of Stevie Wonder. And um, we, you know, his, his catalog is so massive that we could not, I mean, if you, uh, how, how do you make a choice of just nine or 10 songs? So I uh, elected to look at what's known as the golden age of his work, which happened in the um, 1970s, 1970 to 1980 about. And so we put together um, a recording, and this particular song that we're about to play is on that recording. It's entitled, Where Were You When I Needed You Last Winter? Thank you. 
We had a, a master class uh, earlier today at 4 o'clock, and uh, it was kind of done as an open rehearsal. And this is one that we actually rehearsed. So those of you who attended that uh, master class, you can actually check and see if we did everything we, we planned to do, all right? <laughs> I know you're keeping a, a scorecard, right? Okay. <laughs> So this one is, There Is No Greater Love. There is no greater love than what I feel for you. No greater song, no words so true. There is no greater thrill than what I, you bring to me. No sweeter song than what you sing to me. You're the sweetest thing I've ever known. And to think that you are mine alone. Thank you. 
You gotta show your love, you know? You gotta tell them you love them. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we like to uh, do something a little different um, now. We're gonna play a couple songs written by uh, Miss Leah Hinton. And um, the first one is gonna be called Fly, and then after that, Love's Cry. Enjoy. But give it up for Leah Hinton, y'all. Leah Hinton. <laughs> All right. It is truly an honor for me to play with all these amazing musicians. So I'm just living my life like it's golden, in the words of Jill Scott. <laughs> If I'm dead. 
can come right to where you are. And we can meet at the stars. No distance will tear us apart. Thank you. Yes, give it up for this face. Come on, y'all. That was so pretty. Thank you. Here is Love's Cry. Wanting 
to hold you and understand you it cries reaching out to you wanting to love you even protect you
Thank you. Thank you. So that song is actually about friendship. You know, when you have that deep friendship, and we've all gone through it on both ends, when maybe that other friend is kind of drifting and doing their own thing, and you know, not where they should be going, and your heart just cries out, you know, come back, you know, come back to the good side, you know. So that was Love's Cry. <laughs> we like to, um, I'm not for sure, I think we might play these next two songs as a medley. This is a, this is a surprise to the band. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is an, an, an yeah, all plans subject to change. <laughs> um, this is a, a composition of mine entitled uh, What Was Has Been, and I collaborated with a uh, great lyricist in the city of Boston by the name of Cyril Chapman, and he came up with uh, some words that, that I liked, and um, so we're going to try those, and the name, the, the um, with the words, the song is called A Brand New Joy. And the following song, which uh, we're gonna probably tie these together, is called Count It All Joy. So I think they, they outline a very positive thought. Um, and I just wanna remind everybody that um, this concert is entitled Inspire. So I hope that this music that we played for you tonight has inspired you. Yes, no? <laughs> Talk to us, talk to us now. <laughs> Don't leave us hanging. Um, but before I do that, I do want to thank some people. Um, of course, um, our Jazz and Sanctuary South Shore staff, um, we couldn't do this without you, my wife and others. Um, we also have some merchandise for sale. We have CDs. We have uh, USB. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> Show and tell. Um, but we have, we have some of our CDs, DVDs, and, and other merchandise there, so you could take some of this music home with you uh, and enjoy it forever. Those of you who don't have CDs, players, I don't see any really people that wouldn't know what CDs are here, <laughs> but there are some. <laughs> But uh, if you don't have a CD player anymore, we've come up with to the 21st century and we do have USB music cards for you. So, um, and uh, I also like to also appreciate all of you for coming out. We so appreciate you. Without you, there would be no us. This would be, a, this is a beautiful hall, but it's no fun to play without some people in the seats. So thank you. I see some of my church family out here. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you. Love you madly. And uh, I also want to thank the staff. I thank the music department, but also the Stonehill, Stonehill College staff. Um, Stephen Lamb and his staff uh, have been so kind and uh, we're really fortunate to be able to play here for our spring concert. This is our second spring concert here. And once again, J Professor James Bond and the music department, thank you for hosting us once again. <laughs> Laszlo Gardoni on piano. <laughs> Avery Sharp on bass. <laughs> Rick Peckham on guitar. <laughs> Ian Buss on saxophones. <laughs> Leah Hinton on voice. Yours truly, my name is Yaron Israel. Thank you. So, enjoy. A brand new joy, and count it all joy.
There's a new day for them to see, and there's a better way to be. Prepare yourself for brand joy. Learn from mistakes. You have got what it takes. Don't be crying. Life is worth the trying.
tumble and you take a tumble and you feel blue don't let it get to you remember who you are with faith you will go far what was has been Start fresh again, take a minute, make a plan and win it, and those with love for you will be so proud of you. There's a new day of love to see, and there's
there's no one there count it all joy 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 when your strength is wearing thin because a test your life has been and you feel like giving in count it all joy i've got joy joy i've got joy i've got joy joy i've got joy i've got peace so much. Thank you so much, Lasso Gardoni, Avery Sharp, Ian Buss, Rick Peckham, and what can we say, Leah Hinton, yours truly, Yaron Israel. Thank you so much.